This is not the story I thought it would be. After a year of gathering footage, doing interviews, and putting the pieces together a thousand different ways, I realized the story I was looking for was not the story I found. And so why should the premiere be any different? I had one goal in exhibiting this short film about my hometown, to share it back with the people of Roby. You see, they'd graciously invited me into their town, their places of businesses, their homes, and did it all with a smile. They gave me their stories, their heartbreaks, but mostly, they gave their time and asked for nothing in return. At first, it was obvious to show the movie at a theater, but that wasn't going to work. Then I considered a live stream back to the little town and discovered it didn't have the most reliable or fastest internet. So I looked at the most appropriate way to share a movie about a town that hit its peak during the 50s, a drive-in theater. The first images to pop into my mind were of the deserted drive-ins haunting towns nearby, but I found one still open an hour from Roby in Abilene. I reached out to the owner via Facebook and email, left messages, and finally connected with the manager. After giving him my plea to share the movie, he graciously agreed and said he'd show it for free. I was giddy. The next challenge was getting him an 11 gig file. I immediately bought jump drives and express shipped them. When they got there, he told me he couldn't open them because they were formatted wrong. You see, I was Mac and he was PC. This only days before the premiere. So in a desperate attempt, I uploaded the file to a sharing site. When I dropped the file on the site, the menu said 12 hours. <sighs> I started the upload and went to bed, and the next morning waited, until finally. I'd been promoting the film through social networks and even posters hanging all over town. The posters turned up at the bank, break rooms, grocery store, convenience stores, even the post office. I made a trailer, and while it might sound a bit old-fashioned, having the local newspaper cover the premiere was still exciting. There was a sandwich board at the town square, I did a promotion to send me selfies with the poster, but I still wasn't sure who'd show up or why. I'd gotten the film there, admission was free, there were even free posters. What could go wrong? Well, a record heat wave that topped 118 degrees an hour before the movie started at an outdoor movie theater. And then it happened. People began to show up. Young people, old people, families, friends, some even driving over seven hours to see it. My short film was only 38 minutes, so I decided to do a condensed cut of the production vlogs. Then I recorded an introduction, bundled up the whole thing, and sent it their way. And then it began. Hey, Roby. I'm so excited that you're here. What my little movie about my world. Yeah. I wish I could be there with you. Unfortunately, with what's going on in the world, that's not going to happen. But I know that I'm there with you in spirit. And I wish I was sitting on the front row. But I am truly excited to introduce you to my movie. I am. I went to bed, anxious but exhausted. It was out of my hands now. The next morning I hesitated to pick up my phone. I really did. I guess my biggest hurdle was one in myself. Why would anyone want to watch this little movie I'd made? And then I saw the first message. And the next. And the next. And the next. I was told the film ended with the drive-in equivalent of a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you.
In the end, I simply showed up and turned on a camera. I learned so much from the fundamentals of documentary filmmaking to how to just shut up and listen. I discovered my own personal strengths and weaknesses, like connecting a thousand different pieces and the brutal pain of editing a documentary. Every day, I was surprised by some new fact I discovered, and I celebrated when little things worked, like a 12-hour upload. But mostly, I reconnected with the town I grew up in. Ultimately, all I hope is that this film reminds the good people of Roby that they haven't been forgotten, and neither will their stories. <laughs>